The population of the homeless, it kind of depends who you talk to. The city of Nagoya says that there's under 200. Other organizations like Oasis and Caritas that actually work with the homeless, they estimate it to be between 2,500 and 3,000. And that would not surprise me if it was even more than that. Because where Itzko and I have seen in Meijo Cohen, and Shirakawa Cohen, and up along under the underpass, there's a lot of homeless that even if it was an official tally or census, they wouldn't want to be included in on it. And even though they are homeless, they have very much a sense of privacy. And what little they have, they're very, very protective about it. For example, you saw today, we never entered their space without asking first. We never forced anything on them. We always allowed them to make a motion of accepting us to enter their space before we did. Just because they're homeless doesn't mean that they don't deserve the same respect that you would give someone entering their house because that is their house. So it's very hard to get an acceptance of the official numbers that the city of Nagoya and Aichi Prefecture want to put out because they're really doing nothing for the homeless. There's no shelter, there's no day center, there's no place that they even offer the homeless to go wash their feet. So what we want to do is, is not help the homeless, but we want to create a day center where we can help the homeless regain their lives and regain their independence. Because that's the only way that they're going to be able to move from homelessness to independence, is to have the opportunity to regain their self-respect and to regain their uh, self-esteem and to be able to believe in themselves that they can do it after so long of being in this uh, situation that they're in right now. On Sundays, what we do is we start up a Wakamiyo Dori over close to Chihaya and we work our way down to here in Sakai where the under overpass is over here and we give Mekon to the homeless in their camps. The reason why we use Mekon is because tangerines are the best source of vitamin C. It helps the homeless to hydrate and it gives them a boost of vitamins that they don't get otherwise. Rice and the onigiri that people usually give them really don't have any nutritional value to them, whereas the tangerines do. Also, if you don't have vitamin C, you really can't absorb all the other vitamins that you intake. So what the tangerines do, it gives them that boost of vitamin C, it helps them to hydrate, and it helps them to absorb the vitamins that they get in the other food that they're able to scavenge or that people passing by give them. The end result is going to be if something isn't done to provide a day center at the least or at the best a homeless shelter a lot of these guys and gals who are homeless here they're going to die on the street we talked to a gentleman today and have several times that has a heart condition and he's getting worse and there's only so much charity that the hospitals have to go around for them. 
And if he doesn't have some place to help him, at least with palliative care, when he gets to the end of his life, yeah, he's, he's gonna die in his hut. That, that's where he's going to die. And I think the question that we need to ask is not why they're homeless and not if they deserve help, but why? And the why is because they're human beings. Because they're human beings, they deserve better than that. Would we want our father or would we want our brother? Would we want an uncle to die like that? And if we don't, then that's why these people deserve a day center, why they deserve a shelter. Because if someone in our family, or God help ourselves, end up like that, that's how we'd want to be treated. And that's something I think that a lot of Christians involved in working with the homeless, that's what they're taking from this. Because we would expect that kind of treatment, that's why we're wanting to do this for them.